proud to be a hero. Now I know you're thinking, hey Vic, are you back in Cliff's Comics? Well, I'll answer that question by saying, yeah, buddy! Welcome to this week's edition of the Comic Hero Show. I'm your host, Victor Nunley, and I am the Comic Hero. That's right, folks. We are back here at Cliff's Comics in Monroe, Louisiana. And I want to apologize for, last, uh, for the last episode, which is episode 51. That was a little watered down. There were a few work-related and um, personal things that I had to deal with. But if you're watching this and you haven't seen episode 51, I only got one word for you. STOP! Besides, even though it was at my apartment, it was a good episode nonetheless. So I encourage you to, to, to watch it as well as this one. Okay. Any questions? First question comes from Kayla Sheremy from Shreveport, Louisiana. She asks, if you could do the show with any comic book writer, who would it be and why? The answer is simple. Stan Lee. I mean, he is Mr. Marvel. He is the old, one of the oldest living comic book writers that are around. I mean, I mean, this guy, I mean, he, he pretty much invented very good storytelling and, um, and who better than to have him I mean there's other writers like I, I could I can name like like Jim Steronko, John Byrne um, you know I can go on and on but Stan Lee is, is the I mean I would just love for him to come on the show and say hey true believers or Excelsior I mean, there are other like current comic book writers that that have come on the scene not too long ago, like uh, Jeff Johns and and, um, and then Amazing Spider-Man writer Dan Slott. But Stan Lee just really stands out from all the rest. Even though he's he's semi-retired, and the only time we ever hear from him is if he's making cameos in Marvel movies or on certain episodes of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Marvel's Agent Carter. But the man is still alive. I mean, he, he's older than my grandma. Anyway, yeah, Stan Lee. All right. Oh, by the way, I have only two questions this week. And the second question comes from Joe Stokes from West Monroe, Louisiana, who I was also in band with at ULM, and I, and I was also in band with his wife as well. All right, now Joe asks, if you could make your own comic hero movie, what would it be? Who would star in it? Well, it wouldn't exactly be a movie. It would be more of a, a documentary. And the reason I say that is because I don't know. I, I, did, I, I would rather it to be a documentary. I mean, probably in the, in the tradition of uh, 
Well, not the traditional, this is Spinal Tap. No, 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 no. no. But uh, more of. Uh, well, it'd be a, it would be a documentary that that be the greatest documentary of all time, or one of them. And, but I, of course, I would star in it, and then Clint Thomas, owner of Clint's Comics, he, he would co-star in it. Um, my family would, would, would co-star in it. And, I mean, what's the, I mean, movies are great, but I think, but I think documentaries are even better. Because you have the real person, or real people in them, really going through all that. But yeah, I, it would be a documentary. Okay, um, I want to thank Kayla and Joe for their questions. And if you have any questions that you want to ask, that you, that you want me to ask and answer on the show for next week's episode, episode 53, please let me know. And I will, and I will gladly ask and answer. Oh, by the way, no tasteless questions. Don't be that person and end up asking me a question like, so how, so how long have you been single ever since you've been, you've been collecting comics or all this other, all this other garbage? The reason, why, you know, the reason why I'm single is because that's none of your daggum business. All right. That's it for, uh, any questions? Oh, next is Comically Speaking. So without further ado, let's talk comics! <laughs> I got me a new girlfriend. She was a raid I haven't seen her in like two weeks. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, folks, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I, this is why I love doing episodes of, of the Comic Hero Show here at Clint's Comics. Because I get to have fun, and I, and I get to include others in it. Yeah. All right. Um, there's only one thing I'm going to talk about in Comic Book Speaking, uh, and that's um, what's going on on the page of the Supergirl. I just got finished getting caught up with it. I read number 38 um, a few days ago, and I found out that um, the Crucible Academy wasn't exactly what I thought it was. I thought it was... I, I thought the whole Crucible Academy story arc in, in Supergirl was going to be kind of like uh, the Avengers Arena um, limited series that Marvel had a few years ago. It isn't. What they're doing, pretty much the, the opposite of, of, the, uh, of what Arcade did to, to all the, uh, uh, the Teenage Avengers, and what they're doing is that they're, they're handpicking uh, young superheroes who have the potential to stop evil. And Supergirl was actually one of, one of those characters, and then but then later, it was revealed that she finds out that Superboy uh, didn't exactly die when uh, when the second Krypton exploded. Nope. He was actually trying to find his way in the world and he even went as far as to go overseas. And a lot of interesting things happened. Um, we found out that Maxima, one of the uh, other, one of the characters that was in uh, that was a that was a teenager in, in in the Crucible Academy. Well, she ends up wanting to kidnap Superboy, or she likes to call it the clone, because have to remember Superboy is not a clone. Superboy is a clone. He's a he dip, this this Superboy by the way differs from the Superboy in the original DC universe. This one is a clone of Superman and Lois Lane's son John Kent from a from a um, alternate timeline. Now, in the original DC Universe, we all know that Superman, well, Superboy was the clone of Superman and Lex Luthor. Well, so she takes, so Maxima takes him back to the um, Crucible Academy, and one of their other members, a, a Comet, had gotten, um, gotten beat up by this alien race that they were going after, and uh, she ends up getting, she ends up arriving on Earth and and um, and leaving her over at a friend's house so we can recover. But then Supergirl goes back to the Crucible Academy and finds out that the entire school was was empty, and that that 
that alien race that they were going up against, well, they ended, well they kidnapped the, the, the students and faculty of the Crucible Academy, including Superboy and Maxima. And what did they try to do with Superboy? Oh, they tried to make an, a, a clone of him. And that's how number 38 ended. And um, I'll let you know what happens in I mean, as the series uh, progresses. Oh, and, and by the way, it, I don't know if it's going to end or not, but you have to remember in the last episode I talked about Convergence. Now, Convergence is when all the DC characters from just about all the Earths go up against each other. And in the end, the DC universe will never be the same. Now, will it go? Now, will things go back to? Will it go back to being the the, uh, the original DC universe? I don't know. But from some of the previews that I've seen, I don't think it will. It, it'll be pretty much a like a, a combination of both the original DC universe and the new 52 universe. So that's going to be very interesting, and I can't wait to find out how that's all going, how, how that's all going to look. All right, that's it for Congly Speaking. Now then, your favorite segment. Let's get to the comics I bought this week. Comic books I bought this week. All right, up first is Detective Comics number 40. This is the first, it's the last issue of the book before Convergence begins in April. And, um... I, I'm still a little behind on it. I'm a, as a matter of fact, I'm behind on a lot of books. But when you feel like books like me, sometimes getting caught up with all of them is easier said than done. But what I can tell you is that this book is amazing. I mean, the, the writing and artwork of Francis Manipole and Brian Lucilato is, I mean, it seems like they haven't even skipped a beat ever since uh, they were on The Flash. And, I mean, they took on Batman just last year, and this book has been awesome ever since. All right, up next is Batman number 38. Now, in the last episode, I held number 39, and I, and I kind of felt bad about that because one thing about me, I don't like I don't like holes in, in books that I read. And I try to fill, and, and I'm very relentless about filling holes. And, um, yeah, like, but, like, there's two and, and, um, and this is uh, part of the of the in-game story arc that's going to run all the way through number 40, which comes out later this month. All right, up next is Deadpool number 41. Now, I've been behind this book ever since the um, Avengers and X-Men Axis uh, miniseries started. And, but I'm going to try to get back on track so I can get caught up with this. All right, up next is Spider Woman number five. Now I just started reading number well, I just read number one and then got started reading number two. And um, one one thing about this book is I mean, this is taking a brand new direction. Uh, and as you can see, Spider Woman even has a new costume. And this is spiraling right out of the Spider Verse story arc that is in all the Spider books in the past few months. Yeah. All right, that, all right, next is Hulk number 12. Now, as, now what, now you can probably get uh, judged by this cover. What's better than the Hulk Busters? The Hulk Buster Busters. And that's exactly what we're seeing here on the front. We're, we're seeing the Hulk, well, not, he doesn't like to be called the Hulk, I mean, Doc Green, along with the Red Hulk and sever, sever, um, several other Gamma-powered, uh, characters that we've never seen before. Now, what is their objective? Find out in this book. All right. Next up is Avengers number 42. Now, I'm still behind on, on Avengers. This is the last issue of, of the book um, before Secret Wars uh, starts next month. And I think what Marvel is doing with their... their I, can't, I really don't know if Marvel is doing the same thing with their books that DC is. With the Convert the Convergence miniseries uh, going on, but we'll find out more as the Secret War starts next month. And finally, Green Lantern number forty. This is the last issue of this book before um, before the Convergence story arc begins in DC. 
And as you can see, um, these these covers, these movie poster like covers. I guess they're paying homage to a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of uh, movies and everything. I mean, the Detective Comics number forty cover with uh, paid homage to the to the Matrix. Okay, let's see. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Set. Okay, the seven I bought, which brings the total number of comics that I bought since December of 1997, 6,688. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and I, you know it's so good to be back at Clint's again. Um, and again, I just want to apologize for uh, the watered down episode that I did. Um, but you know, adversity is temporary, y'all. I mean, not, I mean, bad things don't always last. Um, and of course, next week's episode is going to is, is going to be better than this one, and I will be back here at Clint's Comics. And I'm going to do almost every episode that I can here, here. And um, I also want to apologize for not doing an episode over at uh, Louisiana Comic Con a few weeks ago, like I promised. It's just that there was so much going on, and I didn't, didn't I didn't even get in there until almost five that that evening, because because there was like when I got there, I was closer to Pierre Beaujamal than I was to the Civic Center. But um, but good things did come out of it. As a matter of fact, I I met. Um, Brandon Badeau, who's a comics artist from New Orleans, and I bought some artwork for her. And if you haven't seen the artwork that I have bought him, watch episode uh, 51. All right, well, um, oh, by the way, if you like my Comic Hero t-shirts that I wear every week, um, I, make, I make them for other people for a fee. Now, for adults, they are $10 in a blank shirt, but if you want me to buy the shirt or you can't find the right size or the right color you want, it's $12. And for children, yes, I make I make shirts for children as well. Um, they they are five there's five dollars in a blank tee. If you cannot find a a certain size or color for them, or um, or you want me to buy it, then it's seven dollars. So far, I have made shirts for about four customers, and uh, just let me know what size you want and how, how you want the shirt made, and I'll do the rest. All right, I'm Victor Nunley. I'm the comic hero. I'm about to pay for these books. I'll see you next week. Till then, be safe, be blessed, be a hero. So, uh, so, since I got everything paid and, uh, all that kind of stuff, and I talked to him about my, my, since I already served some time, Show. I'm your host, Victor Nunley, and I am the Comic Hero. That's right, folks. We are back at Clint's Comics once again. 
and I uh, want to apologize again for what for that uh, watered down episode uh, 51. And um, but if you have, I mean, that just I just uploaded on you. Now just dang it. All right. First up is Detective Comics number 41. This is a um, this is the last issue of the book before conversion starts next month. And uh, I'm a little behind on it. But what I can tell you is that some of the artwork by Francis Manipal. And, well, he does the writing and the artwork, along with uh, Brian Brusolato, who's also the colorist. I mean, they have taken this whole book to a level I've never seen. It is amazing. All right, up next is Batman number 38. Uh, that was a hole that I had, um, because in uh, the previous episode, I, uh, one of the comics I bought was uh, Batman number 39. Well, I decided to buy this one because one thing I don't... One thing about me, if I have any holes, I I will fill them. All right, up next is Green Lantern number 40. Oh, oh by the way, um, dang it! I said 39 instead of 40. 